A very good morning to all of you this day of Tuesday, where I believe that you can find the, the things, the solution of the problem that you, you are facing. And that's why we are here. We are here because we believe that God can give you the condition for you to solve that problem, to achieve the goal that you are looking for for so many years. We believe that God, he can transform, he can make you able to find that light that will illuminate all your life and will transform it. How many times people, they are going through situations that they do not know what to do. Problems are overwhelming this person so much that they feel like they are living in, in darkness. And no matter what they are looking to or whatever they are doing, it seems there's no solution. Listen to me. You can always put an end to the suffering that you are going through. If you want to talk to us, you can give us a call to this number that is being displayed on your screen. And meanwhile, I would like to invite you to watch this testimony of someone who has life transformed. Faith is the starting point. It's like an airplane taking off. But what keeps it always high up? The continuity of faith is trust. Whoever separates one from the other will never reach their final destination. Do not forget that the journey through life is not simply made up of beautiful landscapes. Turbulence and storms will suddenly appear. In these moments, what will sustain you? So many have fallen because they had faith to conquer. But they did not have enough trust to remain in the faith. Those who trust God even when everything seems contrary and difficult. Remain firm because their eyes are fixed, not on the thick clouds, but on the Lord who is above them all. Though the fig tree may not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, though the labor of the olive may fail, and the fields yield no food, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. How do you react when everything goes wrong? Who are you when you gain? Who are you when you lose? Never fail to maintain your faith, as it has to be taken care of and maintained so that your achievements will remain. This is only possible through the power of trust. The true servant of God lives by faith, in faith and from faith to faith until the end. Very well, I'm here with Brigitte and also Axel and they have something to share with us. Brigitte, tell us what happened and as a mother, what were your concerns, your problems with Axel? Yeah, my concern was uh, when he was little, not exactly little, when he was at high school, uh, he started to change. He started to become like very not open. He's always closed himself in his room. He doesn't talk to anyone. He came out for only for dinner. He come out for dinner from, from his room. He come for dinner, then go back in his room. And he just, when we, I try to talk to him, he just like, uh, he doesn't respond to me. And he just walk away straight this in, in his room. And for, for how long were, uh, were you in this situation? It was like since he, he was like 15 years old, 15 until... 18, no, until uh, 
he's he stopped and he has changed and stopped coming to the church. And and tell me something, as a mother, how were you feeling concerning to this? Yeah. Looking to your son locked in the room, uh, seeing him depressive. Yeah. How was he at home? How was he with the sister? How was the environment in the house? Yeah, it, uh, I was very sad, like inside, I don't know what happened. I don't know, I don't... I don't have a solution what I want to do something, but I cannot do anything. I talk to him, I question him, he doesn't respond to me. And when her sister talked to him, he he doesn't talk, he said that he's always arguing. He was so, always arguing. Yeah, with her. Yeah. And it's make me sad, I say. I said they are twins, her sister and him. Why it's happened? I was thinking, it's, I was feeling like guilty, it's my fault, because we just moved to Australia and things was getting worse. Yeah. Well, Axel, your mom is telling us her perspective. So what happened since the age of 15 to the moment that you came to the church? What was going on? So, to Charlene, when we came to Australia, my parents were a bit strict. So I was going to school, everything was new, but... I was always stuck, I was always stuck at home, I was not allowed out. Uh, after school I would have to come straight home and I would look to my friends and here the, the kids they usually hang out, they hang out at home, like they, they hang out together, they go out a lot together and I would compare like why am I you know always stuck. So this would make me feel uh, angry, annoyed, I was upset and this would reflect on everyone else in the house. I was angry with my sister. I was I was always agitated. I had this, I was moody to anyone. I just wanted to be out, to be away from everyone by myself or with friends. That's what I wanted. And then um, a few times my mom, my mom invited me to come to the church. Uh, for Mother's Day, she invited me. She said, look, you don't have to buy me anything just come to the church and i would come i would come but i would not really listen but then after some time some years uh i went for a breakup which is about five years later i went for a breakup uh i was i was getting depressed i had anxiety i could not go out by myself uh, i was addicted and when that happened i knew where to go because i had already been to a place where i know that can help me so the invitation that she gave to me let's say a year or two before was actually a seed so i knew when i went through something when i needed help i knew where to go so that's when i came i started getting help within a few weeks i was free from some of the problems that i was facing and today i'm free i'm happy uh, i don't need to to go back to the old ways to go back to the old friendships the old relationships now i know let's say the right path to go miss bridget When you see your husband, your son transformed, delivered with his life, uh, completely transformed, helping others because today is helping others. Mm -hmm. What do you feel? What do you think? Yeah, I'm happy like he has changed. I was praying for him all the time. Now as my children has changed, I'm very happy. I say, oh, God, listen to me. He blessed me. Your yes. children are transformed. Yes, my children, even Alexandra is coming, my yeah, her sister is coming to church and he is coming. I say, God has blessed me, has listened to me. I was really happy. Miss Brigitte, there are mothers now listening to us, watching us. I would like to ask, what is your advice to this mother? Because as far as I know, you invited your son to come uh, to the church during or on the Mother's Day. Yeah, yeah, it will be good if like um, uh, parents keep on playing for their children. I did not like force Alex Axel to come to the church, but I always pray. When I asked him to come to the church, he said, I remember, he said, oh, the church is um, robbing our money. He always said that, he's not coming. Now, like, um, yeah, like it's good if we keep on praying, don't force our children like, 
for my pers my perspective, like, mm -hmm. like don't force your children, keep on praying for your children. And like me, just invite your in, uh, invite your, when your children invite you, come to the church for Mother's Day. I know that God is here. He's going to help us. Nothing is impossible. So here it is, the invitation of Miss Dujit, the example of Axel, his life transformed. This coming 12th of May, we have the Mother's Day. So you are our special guest. Here in our headquarters, 153 Northumberland Street. If you'd like to know the address of the nearest church to your house, you can go online, uckg.org.au. And could you see how Brigitte and Axel, they have their lives transformed? A mother that started praying for her son and the seed that was planted finally grew and was bearing fruit. And today Axel is here sharing with us his transformation of life. And you know, maybe you are a mother. And please pay attention, you are mother. It's exactly with you, mom, that I want to talk to at this very moment. Maybe you are living in a house where your children, they do don't talk to you. Where your children, they are also locking at their rooms and they are not even saying good morning or good night. Maybe you are having problems with your children because they got involved with drugs, with friends. They took them in the path that you could never imagine. Maybe you are having a very difficult relationship with your daughter, with your son. Maybe you look to your children and you see them taking decisions that are destroying them, are harming them, are harming the future. And no matter what you tell them, you try to advise them, you try to warn them, you try to let them know that whatever they are doing can compromise their future, but they are not listening. And you see that the problems they are going through, the wrong choices they are taking have been each day even more and the problems are growing and trying to solve one problem, they are creating two or three and you look at yourself like powerless. You have no conditions to, to help them. Brigitte, she, she could find herself in a situation where she didn't know what to do. She didn't know how to help Axel, but she knew and she starts doing to ask God in order for her life and her son to be transformed. And thanks God that she has done because he is here today sharing how his life was transformed. And that's why, mom, this coming Sunday, and pay attention to what I'm going to say. I know it's the Mother's Day, but this coming Sunday, we are going to say a very special prayer on your behalf, mom. You know what Brigitte did? One day she said to her son, I don't want any gift. I just want you to come with me. Maybe you are going through so many problems between you and your children. Maybe there is no relationship between you and your children. Maybe you are looking at them and their suffering is being your suffering and you don't know what else to do. Well, uh, we are going to say a prayer on your behalf. We are going to ask God to bless you and bless your children to transform your family. If you want this coming Sunday, uh, 9.30 a.m. We also have 7.30, 3 p.m., 5 p.m., but we are going to say a prayer on your behalf. And in the same way that Axel was transformed through the faith of his mother and his faith too, we believe that you, mom, you can see the life of your children being transformed. Your heart is saying there is no way out. A voice keeps telling you that it's over. People say that it will take 
seek a miracle They say so many things Circumstances say it's impossible Friends keep telling you that you fail But God is saying everything is possible Oh, He is able, just believe. Don't say you are nobody, don't try to hide. Use the faith that you have deep inside. I will make you stronger. It's really only up to you, this is your time. I'll change the story of your life. uckg.org.au is the website that you can go and uh, there you will find all the information about Universal Church and what we are daily doing. You will also find a platform called uh, Pastors Online where you can chat with one of them and talk or chat with one of them asking for a prayer or submitting your prayer request or making any question that maybe you you want to and they will clarify you in the book of luke chapter 9 or better chapter 8 verse 50 we find something very interesting when a man was looking at his daughter and saw his daughter extremely sick and to the point of a worker to come to him and say, your daughter is dead. Jesus looked at him and said, do not be afraid, only believe. And you may ask, but how, how can we believe with such news? How can we believe when someone, a father, is listening from someone that his daughter is already dead? And listen to me, Jesus, knowing how we are vulnerable when our feelings are coming up and the limitations of, that we have as human beings, he said to these men, do not be afraid, only believe. And maybe you are going through a situation at this very moment with your children, with your family, with your marriage, in life in general, and you do not know what else you can do. You see that it seems that everything is dead around you. Everything died around you. You have no hope anymore. But I am here to let you know and to tell you what Jesus said. Do not be afraid, only believe. Yes, it's true. I know that sometimes you look at me and you say, Ricard, you are not understanding the situation that I'm in. Maybe I do not have an idea of what exactly your problem is, but I know what is written here. And it's written here, do not be afraid. So please, if you heard someone saying that there is no solution, that there's nothing that can be done. If you, you are exhausted and without strength to keep on fighting, if you see a situation in your life, in your family, in your business, in your health, that you say there's nothing that can be done, my dear friend, there's, there's, there's something that you can do. Do not be afraid, only believe, because when you believe, Miracles can happen. And the living proof of this is the testimony that you are going to watch. Just as God works with faith, the devil works with doubt. Doubt is the main weapon of hell to weaken and destabilize people all over the world. We are bombarded daily by voices that come at us from all sides, with most carrying that invisible poison of doubt. What we have observed is that those who drink from this poison offered by the kingdom of darkness end up becoming insecure and terrified. The voice to whom we give ear will dictate our actions and reactions. The Japanese scientist and researcher Masaru Emoto 
in one of his most intriguing experiments, proved that words have the power to physically influence everything that exists. Emoto placed three servings of cooked rice in three different glass beakers, then covered them with water. Every day he would say, thank you, I love you, to one of the beakers. I hate you, you were a fool, to the second one. And the third, he ignored completely. After a month, the result was surprising. The rice that received the kind words began to ferment, giving off a pleasant aroma. The rice in the second beaker, which received the negative words, became completely dark and rotten. And the third one, which was ignored, began to mould. Surely, this is thought-provoking. If a word caused such an effect with rice, can you imagine what this can do within a person? This is why we often see so many people overwhelmed by panic and fear, all because of a word they heard in one moment. Is it possible for a person to have peace when they have doubts? The only formula capable of shielding your faith is not listening to what might weaken you. Instead, feed yourself with the word that comes from God, as this generates certainty, conviction and strength. Consequently, even when facing a difficult period, you will not be shaken because this will sustain you in any situation. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Only those who are in him will overcome like he did. From now on, give ear more to the voice of faith, because while the others pull you down, this one lifts you up. Darkness for me was sadness. I had a deep, deep sadness inside of me. I couldn't see the way out. I used to cry when I was at home, but when you see me outside, I was happy. But I was really, really, really sad inside, and I didn't have peace. I couldn't see any light. I had it for like a couple of years, that sadness, but no one knew, because outside, I used to pretend. But when I'm myself or at home, I used to cry because I lost most of my siblings, my member of the family, like in one year. And uh, that fear came to me and, and that darkness empowered me. And I couldn't do nothing. I didn't see, where can I go? And one day when I received the light, I had peace. Everything changed inside of me. I, don't, I didn't pretend outside yet. The problem still come but it doesn't empower me anymore. I overcome those feelings of most of my siblings who passed away. The light now is inside of me and I'm happy and I have peace and I don't pretend anymore. You're not able to live a normal life. You're always in severe pain, and doctor visits are starting to take a toll on you. Test after test, and visit after visit, but the doctors always find something wrong with your health. You have diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and on your last visit to the ER, the doctor found a mass in your liver. If it's not that, then you're always in constant and severe pain but the doctors don't know why or where the problem is coming from. You're in and out of the hospital, and all you can do is drown yourself with medication because you can't bear the pain. You struggle to do simple things like working, driving, walking, or even just breathing. Has your health been going downhill? Very well, and now you know that it is possible for you to put an end to the suffering that you or a family member uh, are going through. But today, you don't need to wait for Sunday. Today, Tuesday, we, have, we still have services that will be held here in the church 
10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 7.30. Services where we are going to pray for your health. If you, if you have an incurable disease, a health problem, or a family member who is going through one, if you have a family member or someone that you love that was admitted at a hospital and unfortunately medicine couldn't help, they've done everything they could, but until today, this person is still sick. Today, we are going to say a prayer on your behalf for you to be healed, for the power of God to be manifested in your life and for you to receive that healing because even through faith, we can be healed and reach that blessing in our life. So if you have been going from doctor to doctor, from treatment to treatment, if for years you have been carrying this disease, this problem in one of your organs, your bones are weakening, your blood is, is compromised, you, you cannot breathe, you are having several problems that family members already died with it, today we are going to pray for you believing that through faith, the miracle can happen in your life. Here, our headquarters is, is located at Liverpool, 153 Northumberland Street, in front of Liverpool Plaza, close to the Liverpool Westfield. If you'd like to know where our, our church or the nearest church is from where you are watching us, you can go to our website, or you can give us a call. God bless you all. Remain in the faith. I'll see you here tomorrow.